Anne left the supermarket with full bags of groceries, rushing to get home to prepare a festive dinner to celebrate her 40th birthday. Only close friends and their families were invited. Lost in thought, she stepped off the sidewalk onto the parking lot road and was knocked off her feet by a sharp push from behind. She fell, dropping the bags onto the asphalt and scattering their contents. Anne screamed in surprise and pain. Excuse me, lady, for God's sake, I don't know how it happened. Where did you come from? The frightened driver of the car helped Anne to her feet, very upset about what had happened. You almost ran over me. Who even gives such people a driver's license? Anne exclaimed, rubbing her injured hand from the fall. Well, you're good too. You should have looked around, protested the stranger. Anne gave him a fiery look. The man lowered his tone. I'm sorry, I was wrong. Let me take you home. I'll get the groceries now. The man, picking up the bag, began to collect the scattered products. Anne, coming to her senses, a little, realized that she was partly to blame for the accident. She softened her tone a little. You're right, it's my fault. I was lost in thought. This is the result. If you could give me a ride home, I would be very grateful. My name is Matthew, the man smiled and held out his hand to the stranger. Anne, she replied, smiling. On the way home, Anne and Matthew had an easy conversation. Your husband is lucky, beautiful, smart wife. Unfortunately, I was not so lucky. My wife left me with a little daughter in my arms. That's how we live. Do you have children? Anne's face changed at the question. The question of children was her pain. Having been married for a long time, she never managed to become a mother. Of course, Anne was not going to talk to a stranger about this, and she replied briefly, No, we don't have children. We've arrived. Thank you for the ride. Have a nice day. The car stopped at the high gate, behind which was a large, beautiful house. Anne, I'm sorry if I offended you, Matthew said, noticing that he had upset the new acquaintance but he did not understand what exactly. No, you forgive me. My nerves have been giving way lately. Thank you again. Anne quickly unpacked the groceries and started preparing dinner. When the table in the living room was already set and there was very little time left before the guests arrived, Anne called her husband, but he did not answer the call. Anne sighed heavily. Lately, her husband had been staying at work until late at night. He often got irritated at all of Anne's questions and said he had a critical project. With time, Anne got used to her husband not being at home and learned to live with it. There was a doorbell on the intercom. Looking at the screen, Anne saw Gwen and Wes smiling. They had been friends with the couple since their college years and were probably the only friends of Anne and her husband. Christopher preferred not to let strangers into their home and life except for friends from their youth. Anne, you are such a beauty. It seems like you are forever twenty-five, no more, said Gwen admiringly. You are wonderful. Happy birthday, dear. This is for you. Wes handed a beautiful bouquet to Anne. And where is our hard worker? Is he not here yet? Well, you know, it's always urgent projects, meetings and business for Christopher. Anne replied. I don't understand how you can endure such a life. You're always alone. Maybe you should go to work. Wes is actually looking for a new specialist, and as you know, finding a good architect is as difficult as finding a surgeon. I remember you were the best in the course, Gwen suggested, feeling the oppressive atmosphere in her friend's home. I would be happy to, but you know that Christopher is against it, Anne replied. Anne, forgive me, of course, but I will say what I think about it. Christopher is selfish, and you are foolish. Don't you see that he has turned you into a housekeeper and spends his time when he wants? It's so convenient for him, Gwen expressed her opinion. Well, my dears, I am glad to see you. Please come to the table. As for Christopher, I hope he can join us soon. Anne tried to smooth the situation, 
leading other guests to the festive table. After some time, when the company had eaten their fill and were now remembering the curious stories of their student years, Christopher finally returned home. The man was serious and smiled at the guests, more out of politeness than joy. Christopher, you could have come earlier today. We haven't seen each other for so long, and it's your wife's birthday today. And where are the flowers for the hostess and beloved woman? Gwen couldn't remain silent when she saw Christopher walk into the room empty-handed. I am also glad to see you, but work doesn't wait. Wes probably understands me, the man replied, showing everyone that he did not like listening to such speeches. I didn't have time to buy flowers. I was rushing, as you see. Anne, happy birthday. Thank you, dear. Anne opened the box and smiled sadly. Christopher never bothered about getting her a gift. He always gave his wife something from jewellery, and this year was no exception. The table became a little more cheerful with the arrival of the homeowner, but constant messages on his mobile phone interrupted conversations. At the end of the evening, after saying goodbye to Anne and Christopher, friends left the big house, and silence fell again. Anne began to clean up the table, and Christopher was constantly absorbed in his phone. When the cleaning was done, Anne turned to her husband. Christopher, don't you think that even when you're at home, you're very far from it in your thoughts? Anne, don't nitpick. I'm working. Okay, I understand. The woman said silently and walked to the bedroom. Barely holding back tears, she entered the room and allowed herself to cry. Despite being married, Anne felt very lonely and unwanted. Her father passed away when she was young and her relationship with her stepfather never really worked out. Thankfully, Anne's friends never disappeared from her life. Otherwise, she would have been completely alone. Anne remembered her conversation with her friends and seriously considered the need to start working. She could spend her time productively and not feel so lonely. The next morning, Anne woke up early and noticed that her husband wasn't next to her. She had a bad feeling and knew that something wasn't right. Anne peeked into her husband's slightly open study door and saw Christopher sleeping on the couch, hiding under a jacket. Her heart raced in her chest. Something was definitely going on with her husband and their family as a whole. After taking a shower and getting ready, Anne went downstairs to the living room. Christopher was sitting in a chair, staring thoughtfully at the landscape beyond the window, with a cup of coffee in his hands. He didn't notice his wife's presence at first, and when Anne greeted him, Christopher jumped in surprise. You've been acting strange lately. Are you okay? You slept in the office? Are you avoiding me? Christopher, do you encounter problems at work? What's going on? Anne asked all the questions that bothered her. We need to talk. Christopher replied in a calm voice. Yes, I wanted to talk to you as well. I know you'll be against it, but I've decided to start working. I've fallen in love with another woman. She's pregnant and we're expecting a child. Christopher answered in the same mundane tone of voice. Anne's vision blurred. She swayed and could barely stand. But how long has your affair been going on? Was all she could ask. What does it matter? I found out about the pregnancy yesterday, if it's so important to you, Christopher said. Thank you for not ruining my birthday, whispered Anne, and her tears streamed down her face. Listen, let's do without hysterics, Christopher said. Christopher, don't you care about my feelings at all? And what do you care about mine, Anne? I'm forty years old, and all of my acquaintances already have children. And what do we have? Christopher raised his voice, completely unaffected by his wife's tears. How dare you blame me for not having children? You know how much I've been through, how many doctors I've seen. And stop this spectacle. Why all this tragedy? Thousands of people get divorced and move on. Understand, I will soon have a son and I will finally be happy. Tonight when I come back, 
we will discuss the details of the divorce. Christopher said and left, slamming the door behind him. Anne collapsed on the floor, crying from pain and humiliation. Christopher decided that the first thing he would do was to stop by his mistress, Ellen, and let her know that he had finally confessed everything to his spouse and that they would soon get divorced. He planned to legalize his relationship with Ellen afterward. Christopher used his key to open the door to the apartment he rented for Ellen, but was surprised to see her packing her things in a huge suitcase. I'm home. Why isn't anyone greeting me? And what's going on here? Are we going somewhere? He asked with a smile. Ellen was surprised to see Christopher. Ah, oh, hi, darling. I didn't expect you so early, she said. So, you didn't answer me? Are we going somewhere? Christopher asked, twirling Ellen in his arms. The young woman pouted theatrically. Christopher looked at her questioningly. Yes, we're going to your beautiful country house, where your wife is currently enjoying life. Well, dear, she has nowhere else to go for now. I have to buy her an apartment. Understand, I can't just throw Anne out onto the street, Christopher explained, frowning. But Ellen wasn't listening to him. I don't want to understand anything. We're a family, there are almost three of us, and we are huddled in this miserable tiny apartment, while she lives alone in her pleasure in the big house. Besides, our baby needs fresh air, and we're forced to live in the city and breathe this polluted air. Ellen was almost in tears, gently stroking her stomach, for greater persuasiveness. You're probably right. Don't be upset. Don't upset our son. Well then, we'll move, Christopher said. Anne was shocked by her husband's betrayal and couldn't gather her thoughts. After sitting on the couch for half a day, she thought it was just a cruel, silly joke. Christopher will come and say that it's a prank. Just a prank, Anne repeated aloud like a spell. The incoming call on her mobile phone made the woman tremble. She didn't want to talk to anyone, but wiping away her tears, Anne looked at the phone screen. Her heart was pounding wildly in her chest. Christopher was calling. Flicking her finger up the screen, she answered the call, but the knot in her throat didn't allow her to say a word. Are you there? Okay, you don't have to say anything. Listen, I found you an apartment. You need to take a look at it, Christopher said. Anne didn't bother to listen to her husband's delusional speech and simply hung up. She believed that such issues should be discussed face to face, not over the phone. Brewing herself a cup of herbal tea, Anne settled on the cosy terrace of her home. She loved this house very much. They bought it together with her husband when they were very young, invested their souls in it and gradually built their lives together. And now Christopher as if nothing had happened, as if all those years together had never happened, says that he found her an apartment. Scoundrel, Anne hissed aloud. Wiping away her tears, she tried to pull herself together, but the happy moments of their married life that surfaced in her memory wouldn't let her rest. The woman was in a broken state, seriously considering whether she should continue living with emptiness and loneliness ahead. Unnoticed by Anne, evening arrived. She was still lost in thought and didn't even notice when her husband returned home. Christopher found his wife and immediately got down to serious talk. Anne, what was that? You hung up the phone and didn't answer my calls? We are adults, after all. Let's part peacefully and amicably. I'm not holding you back. What do you mean? What don't you understand? I'm not holding you back. Go to your mistress if you want. I found you an apartment. An apartment? Then go there. I'm in my own home and I'm not going to vacate it for your mistress. In the worst case, we will sell it and divide the money. I think that would be fair. Anne, this is actually a house bought under my mother's name, if you remember. Moreover, it cannot be sold as it is under mortgage. Excellent, dear. Now I understand why you insisted on registering the house in your mother's name. You covered your back very well. Do you remember that I sold my apartment years ago and invested everything I had in this house? I remember everything. That's why I'm telling you. 
that I found you an apartment. You need to see it, and then we can finalize the deal and also the divorce. Well, fine, live here, but remember, you have to answer for everything in this life, for everything, and you will definitely answer for the pain you caused me. The next day, Anne went to see the apartment her spouse had found for her. Along the way, she remembered how happy she and Christopher had been, how much they had gone through together to achieve what they wanted, what it had cost to arrange their home, and how strongly she supported her husband. Anne had sacrificed her own career for her spouse. She had helped him with complex projects, and now the woman simply couldn't understand how Christopher could easily find a replacement. Anne understood that the main reason that she was at the divorce stage was the lack of children. This topic was very painful. How many times had she run around to the best doctor's offices? How many pills had she taken? How many injections had she endured, but all in vain? Doctors had just shrugged and couldn't explain why, after so many years spent together, she and her husband had no children. Christopher never blamed his wife for this problem directly, but nevertheless, he was sure that the problem was with his spouse. Anne was very pained to listen to when Christopher talked about Gwen and Wes, their growing son. Lost in thought, the woman didn't notice that she was standing right in front of the entrance to her new home. The apartment was on the fifth floor, turned out to be quite spacious and bright. Of course, it couldn't compare to a private house, but it was suitable for comfortable living. Where I started once, I end now, muttered Anne. The next day, her suitcases were almost packed. She took only what was hers, and sadly looked back at her home. Alas, she never found true happiness there. Christopher, what is she doing here? A woman cried out behind her. Anne turned around to see a young girl standing in front of her. She was about twenty years younger than Anne, beautiful and confident, and could have easily been Christopher's daughter. Anne smiled, feeling a lump in her throat. She wanted to run away from these people, but she composed herself and calmly replied, I am still at my own home, darling. And, by the way, I am still your lover's lawful wife. As for what you are doing here, that is a good question. No shame, no conscience. Where do you all come from, disgusting people? Anne turned to her husband. I think I said that your mistress shouldn't be here before I left. She is not a mistress, but the mother of my son. Anne, stop the hysterics. It will lead us nowhere good. We are modern people, the man said in a raised voice. Very modern indeed, the woman laughed. Christopher, you have never understood people and you are very wrong now. Look at her. There is a scrolling line on her forehead. I'm looking for a rich daddy. The man frowned, but remained silent. Ellen rolled her eyes theatrically, and began to lightly touch her still very flat stomach. Anne could not help but laugh. Girl, what is your name? Anne asked. Dear Christopher, this girl is a natural actress. I am certain that the surprises in your life are just beginning. Anne heard a sound of an incoming SMS on her phone and breathed a sigh of relief. The taxi had arrived at the gates of the house. Taking two large suitcases, she rolled them towards the exit. Christopher watched his wife leave, with sadness in his heart. Something was bothering him, something unpleasant in his soul, and at some point, he even wanted to stop this madness that was happening in their life. But Ellen quickly resumed playing her role, as if sensing that something was wrong, and tried to shift the attention of the man she adored to herself. Christopher, my dear, something hurts badly in my lower abdomen, Ellen complained. The man quickly came to his senses. My dear, you should not worry. Rest and stay in peace and quiet, as the doctor said, remember? said the man, and holding the waist of his beloved, he gently sat her down. Anne left the walls of her once beloved home, holding on to her dignity until the end. It was unbearable 
for her to see the woman who destroyed their family being treated with such tenderness and care by her husband. And what awaited Anne herself ahead? She was even afraid to imagine. In the taxi, she let her tears flow. The driver sympathetically looked at the passenger in the rearview mirror and eventually asked, Are you okay? May I help you with something? I'm sorry, I just couldn't hold back my emotions any more. It's just that my husband brought his pregnant mistress into our home, that's all. Anne replied with sadness, tears streaming down her face. You know, but I'm not certain that such a beautiful woman can be replaced. What a fool your husband is, replied the driver. Well, where is that beauty? I'm already forty. He found himself a young girl, Anne responded. Dear woman, you're only forty. It's the perfect time to love, live and thrive. As for the youth people... They've got nothing but wind in their heads. What's the use of their youth? I'm 67. Trust me, as an experienced man, everything will be fine for you. And when that happens, your husband will come back. But will you need him later? It may seem like the end of the world now, but believe me, you will soon remember this situation with complete indifference. You may even laugh about it later. Anne was truly grateful to this wonderful stranger for his support and kind words. She listened to him, and in her heart, hope for a happy future began to grow. In her first month in her new place, Anne was arranging her life. The apartment in the new building was spacious and comfortable, but it couldn't compare to the cosy home where she had spent many years. Perhaps the woman would have gone crazy from loneliness and sad memories if it weren't for her childhood friends, Gwen and Wes, who supported her as best they could. Wes took Anne on at his company without hesitation. Little by little, Anne settled into her new work environment, where she was greeted warmly by the team, and when she received her first paycheck in many years, her happiness and joy knew no bounds. Gwen was a frequent visitor to her friend's home. Wes, in turn, on his own initiative, stopped communicating with Christopher. The man only called him once, as soon as he found out what had happened, and of course, did not support his friend's betrayal. One night, Anne stayed at work late. There was an urgent project that they couldn't seem to finish on time for the client. Wes was already desperate and was sure that his company would fail the project and the client would go to a competitor. But Anne, remembering everything she had been taught at the university for many years, worked hard and fixed the situation. Leaving the finished project on Wes's desk, she left the office. It was quite damp and cold outside. The piercing wind literally blew through her coat. Anne shivered from the cold. Oh, my bad, I should have called a taxi in advance. The woman scolded herself aloud. Looking around, Anne saw the headlights of a parked car on the other side of the street. The road was empty, so deciding to take a shortcut, she resolutely moved forward to cross the four lanes of the roadway. A second later, as soon as Anne stepped onto the road, a car jumped out from around the corner. The headlights blinded her. She heard the squeal of brakes and stumbled out of fright. You're crazy and probably tired of living. She heard the voice of a man getting out of the car. It's you who's crazy. Watch where you're driving, snapped the woman, fully aware that she was in the wrong. Oh, an old acquaintance. Hello. The same people are always on the road, heard Anne, a mocking male voice. Although he seemed familiar to her, the headlights still blinded her and she couldn't see the face of the driver who had approached her. Let me give you a hand, I'll help you up. Thanks, I've already been helped. My knees and hands are bruised. Tomorrow is an important day for me. I have to present the project to the client, and you've ruined everything for me. What will the client think of me? Anne said reproachfully. And you should tell this person the truth, that you're a frivolous person, who often throws herself under the wheels of a car, replied the driver. 
You're a bore. You're right. That's the type of person I am. Either way, get in the car. I'll take you home. Or leave the road. I'm in a hurry. Okay, okay. I don't want to go in this state. Take me home. Take me home. It's your responsibility because you practically hit me with your car. Anne quickly got up from the wet asphalt and plopped down on the passenger seat. When the driver turned to her, she said in surprise, "You, Matthew, if I remember your name correctly." "Yes, that's me. I recognized you right away. You're Anne." The man and the woman laughed. What a coincidence that she practically got the wheels of the same car as a few months ago. Well, I remember where to take you," the man said with a smile. But Anne smiled sadly in response. "A lot has changed in my life. Now I have another address. You know, there are new apartment buildings not far from the South Bridge." "Yes, I know. So it turns out we're neighbors now," the man smiled. "Excuse my curiosity." Why did you move from a house to an apartment? My daughter and I are dreaming of moving into a house. The air is cleaner there. Everything is different. I divorced my husband. He bought me this apartment, so I moved. Anne replied, "I am sorry, but as far as I remember, you had a happy family not long ago. It's all banal. I couldn't have children with my husband, but his mistress got pregnant." Now they live in my house, enjoying life, and I'm in the apartment. That's it. I've satisfied your curiosity. Let's be quiet now. I have an important day at work tomorrow. I'm sorry, Anne. I didn't realize it was like this. Matthew was silent for the rest of the way to Anne's house. When they arrived, the man smiled. We're neighbors. I live across the street. I hope this isn't the last time we meet. Only. Let us under different circumstances. Thank you for the ride, Anne smiled. She only fell asleep towards morning, thinking about the work she had done on the project and about Matthew. The man was handsome, and being with him felt simple and easy. Anne found herself hoping to meet him again, but under more pleasant circumstances. In the morning, barely opening her eyes, Anne looked at the clock and was horrified. I overslept. Oh, not today! She rushed around her apartment, trying to get ready as quickly as possible. Within ten minutes, she was fully dressed, had managed to touch up her lashes, apply blush, and tie her long hair in a tight bun. She cursed herself for not calling a taxi in advance again, and now had to waste precious time waiting for a car. Good morning, neighbor. Anne heard a familiar voice behind her. Turning around, she breathed a sigh of relief. Matthew, help me! I'm late for an important meeting. She ran towards the car, where her recent acquaintance was waiting. I had been working until late last night on a project, and it's critical for my future and the company's reputation. The boss says the client is very picky, and only I know the nuances of the project's execution. Therefore, only I can convince the customer that our project is the right fit for him. Well, how can I refuse a beautiful woman? By the way, I'm also in a hurry for an important meeting. It's not far from here, where you almost hit me yesterday. Remember? And pleaded with the man. He noted her natural beauty with minimal makeup. I agree, but I have a condition. We'll have lunch together sometime. Matthew, anything you want. Let's go. As they drove up to the office, and jumped out of the car and hurried into the building, Matthew looked at her with a smile. He could not understand the man who, of his own free will, will let such a woman out of his life. After parking the car, Matthew headed towards the same office building. Meanwhile, Anne, panting, literally flew into the office. Phew! She got here in time. Wes. Have you looked at the project? I did everything I could, and even more. There are some questions. Construction is planned by the river, and I solved the flooding problem like this. Anne took a pencil from the desk and showed the way to solve the problem on the unfolded sheet of paper with drawings. For a few seconds, Wes was stunned with admiration. Anne 
You're a miracle. You did in one evening what my best specialists couldn't think of. My dear Anne, the client will be here from minute to minute, and all my hope is on you. Will you present your project? Where's, of course, don't worry. I'll do everything at the highest level, said Anne. Sorry for being late. Hearing a familiar voice, Anne could barely stand on her feet. Matthew, what are you doing here? Anne asked, turning to the voice. What a pleasant surprise, Anne. I suppose I'm the picky client who made you work late last night. The man smiled. At first, Wes was tense, but seeing the friendly atmosphere of the gathering, he felt relieved. Good day, Mr. Foy, and you, it turns out, are acquainted with our Anne. Wes extended his hand in greeting. Good day, yes, Anne and I are friends, and we live next door. I'm sure I'll like everything in the project. Anne, please, let's move on to the presentation. The negotiations went on in a pleasant atmosphere. Matthew was impressed by the professionalism of this lovely woman. To be honest, I approached another company with a similar question, but their project turned out to be a failure. They couldn't think of the details of how to deal with possible seasonal flooding. But you, Anne, succeeded. But it's not just my merit. Our whole team has been working on the house project, Anne replied, a little embarrassed. I like everything, Anne. I would like to invite you to our site, where the house will be located in the future. I also wanted to discuss some details. Will tomorrow suit you? Matthew asked. Anne blushed even more and looked at Wes. Well, Anne, you have an excellent understanding with the client, so congratulations. You will lead this project to the end. Wes smiled. All day, Anne was in a cheerful mood. Everything was gradually improving in her life. She hardly thought about her ex-husband, who had betrayed her. The way Anne looked at Matthew could not be hidden from the friend of her youth. Matthew himself did not hide his sympathy for the beautiful woman, and Wes, sincerely wishing Anne happiness, entrusted her with this project, understanding how important it is for her now. At the end of the workday, Anne left the office, and looking around, for some reason, she felt like Matthew was nearby. Anne? What are you looking for? Are you twenty years old? The woman asked herself aloud and prudently went to the regulated crossing. In the morning, as agreed, Anne was waiting for Matthew at the entrance. Anne hated unpunctuality, so when she spotted Matthew in the distance, Anne became indignant. Hello, Matthew. I've been waiting for you in the rain for half an hour. Hello, sorry, for God's sake, but my daughter got sick. Her temperature rose at night. I haven't written down your number, so I just couldn't warn you. Our trip is cancelled. Oh, I'm sorry, Matthew, the woman asked guiltily. Is there anything I can do to help? You know, I really need your help. I don't want to leave Eva alone. I need to go to the pharmacy. Let's do it this way. You go home and I'll go to the pharmacy. Write down my number. If you need anything else, call me. And you can call me any time. I'll always help. Now tell me, your apartment number. I'll quickly buy everything and bring it over. Thank you, Anne. You're really helping me out. Fifteen minutes later, Anne returned from the supermarket with a bag containing fruits and medicine bought from the list. Take off your coat and come in, please. Eva fell asleep. I made tea. You're all wet, and I wouldn't want you to get sick because of me. Matthew said tenderly, helped Anne take off her coat and invited her to the kitchen. To Anne's surprise, the atmosphere in Matthew's apartment was quite modest. She knew that the amount of money needed for Matthew's project was quite large. However, based on the situation in the apartment, it could be concluded that he was not a wealthy man. During tea, Matthew and Anne talked a lot, including about his little daughter Eva, who was only five years old. The girl was born healthy, but a month later, doctors diagnosed her with a congenital heart defect. When the baby was one year old, 
doctors performed a successful operation, and Eva quickly recovered. A year after the operation, Eva had her first asthma attack. Matthew did everything he could for his daughter, but no one was able to cure her completely. The only thing doctors recommended was to take the child out of the city more often and change the environment. Fresh, clean air will certainly be good for her, and maybe the disease will go away altogether. She will grow up and be completely healthy. That's why I thought building a house now is the way to go. The only problem was that the house would be practically by the river. You're the only one who could solve that problem. Matthew, please, excuse my curiosity, but what do you do? Where do you work? It must be difficult to raise a daughter alone. You're a mum and a dad to the little girl. Well, of course, it's very difficult sometimes, especially when my daughter is sick. I'm terribly worried. When Eva is healthy, I take her to daycare and go to work myself. I'm a mechanic at a technical service station. How do you manage to do everything? I'm used to it. I can't afford not to manage everything myself, because there's no one else to take care of Eva. We're trying to do everything together. Now, we're eagerly waiting for the construction of our dream home to begin. When we finish, I hope everything will get easier. My childhood friend built a sawmill in the village, not far from my plot. He says he really needs me as a good woodsman. Wow, do you understand this kind of work? Anne was surprised. Of course, my father did it all his life. We had a profitable wood processing business, by the way. I've been in this area since I was a child. But when my mother died, my father eventually met another woman and sold everything. I didn't even think about doing this business. I just wanted to leave for the city. My father gave me a large sum of money from the sale of the business. I graduated from agricultural college. I know everything about forestry. I became a car mechanic because my profession wasn't in demand in the city. But I make good money. Enough for me and Eva. I still plan to leave the city and do what I love. Anne listened to Matthew with admiration. She had never met such simple and sincere people in her life, except for Gwen and Wes, of course. Matthew shared a lot about his plans for the future. Anne liked everything about him. His sense of humour, simplicity, way of communicating, care and attention. She especially liked his sincere eyes and smile. Matthew and Anne were so engrossed in their conversation that they didn't notice Eva entering the kitchen. Daddy, who is this lady? Eva asked. Eva, darling, how are you feeling? Matthew smiled, turning to his daughter. Come here, I'll introduce you to my friend. This is Anne. She lives next door to us and came to help us as soon as she found out that you were sick. Hello, Anne. I'm Eva. I'm very pleased to meet you, Eva. You're a very cute and beautiful girl, Anne said, looking at her new acquaintance with curiosity. You're also very beautiful. Do you have a daughter? The little girl asked. Unfortunately, no. I would really like to have a smart daughter like you, Anne replied sincerely. Well, if Eva agrees, I suggest we order pizza and watch an interesting movie. We have an unplanned day off tomorrow anyway, Matthew suggested. Eva clapped her hands with joy and hugged everyone. Hooray! Will Anne also be with us? Matthew looked imploringly at the confused woman. Well, if you accept me into your team, I would be happy to join you, Anne said, stroking the little girl's unruly curls, and the girl leaned against her, putting her head on her shoulder. Anne was touched by the child's sincerity, warmth and openness. From that day on, a true friendship blossomed between Anne and Matthew. Eva was pleased that Anne had become a frequent guest in their home. The friendly company spent time together perfectly, playing board games, watching educational films about animals, and often going to amusement parks and zoos. After spending months together, Anne could no longer imagine her life without Matthew and Eva, just as Matthew and his daughter couldn't imagine their lives without Anne. 
The house construction was progressing rapidly. Wes entrusted Anne with another complex project, which she handled brilliantly. The employees now consulted Anne on difficult matters, and she never refused to help them. One day, when Wes came to the office, he was acting differently than usual. Anne noticed this and decided to find out from her friend what was troubling him. Wes, may I come in? I made coffee. Anne knocked on the boss's office door with a cup in her hand. Hello, Anne, come in. Of course you're always welcome, Wes smiled. Did something happen? You seem upset, Anne said. Yes, Anne, you're right, something happened. Remember, Christopher gave me some money? Well, he's having some problems with his business and other things. Ellen seems to have given birth to a son, and he demanded the money back sooner than expected. And that's not all, Anne. He asked me to tell you that the apartment you live in, in two words, he has his own family, and he won't pay the loan for it any more. Yeah, that's to be expected. It was a surprise to me that the property was bought on credit, but Christopher promised to pay for it regularly. Once again, I believed him and he cheated again. I'll pay back my debt within a week, and I don't understand how he could do this to you. We've been together for so long. You sold your apartment and invested every penny in the house, where he now lives with another woman. I really wanted to hit him hard, but this coward refused to even meet with me. He said I should put the money in his account, and since I supported you, he said we have nothing more to talk about. Wes, I'll manage. The apartment is in my name, I earn good money, and I have a wonderful boss, so I'll pay off the loan myself. Now I've learned a lesson for life. I was foolish, young, and didn't think it would all end like this. But he has a son now. You know, Christopher always wanted children, and of course, he should think about his future now. Anne sadly smiled. Oh, come on. Do you still feel pity for him after all he had done? Oh, Anne. But anyway, you're not alone. Gwen and I will help you. Our company's reputation has grown thanks to your efforts. That's why I decided to give you a well-deserved raise. Thank you, dear. Can I leave early today? Everything is done at work. I want to stop by the store on the way home. Today is my birthday. We've already picked out a gift with Matthew. We just need to pick it up. Wow, you've picked the gift out with Matthew, Wes smiled. Is everything serious? Oh, I don't know, Wes. I think I should trust fate, if it gives you a second chance. Matthew is a very good person, and Eva is so cute a girl. They brought me back to life. Your eyes are glowing, Anne. Don't miss the chance for happiness. You're right. Trust fate. Thank you. I'm overjoyed that you and Gwen are there for me. Otherwise, I would have gone crazy from loneliness. A year passed. Well, guys, you did an impressive job. Your house is just amazing. Anne, you calculated everything perfectly with the river. Now, no flood can harm it. When are you planning to move in? Wes admired the view from the house terrace, which overlooked the river. Probably when the time comes. Anne rubbed her rounding belly and looked at Matthew with eyes full of happiness. The man hugged his wife and gently kissed her cheek. We have a little more to do. The workers are finishing the work inside the house and that's it. Besides, Anne and I have decided to live in the city until the baby is born and then we'll think about moving. Great job, guys. I'm thrilled for your new family, said Wes. Oh, Wes, I never thought a person could be so happy, Anne summed up. You're a bright example, dear. Matthew, don't hesitate to ask for help. I'll always help. Anne's family is my family. That's our rule. Thank you, Wes. Help will really be needed. I decided to get into woodworking. I'm like a fish in water in this business. So soon, I'm going to set up production locally. Wonderful. But I won't let Anne go. Don't even dream about it. Anne laughed. Wes, I won't leave you either. You and Gwen have helped me so much. 
I remember kindness and value our friendship. And I enjoy my work. And money won't hurt us right now. All right, enough about business. Let's go see Gwen and the kids. They're probably missing us. When they returned home, they saw the children playing with the ball. Gwen was setting the table. She brought the treat, having prepared it in advance at home. By this time, the life of the abandoned, cheated woman was gradually getting better. The apartment issue was resolved thanks to a lawyer hired by Wes. Thanks to the decent payment for her work, and diligently paid off the mortgage on the property. She married Matthew six months after they met, and Eva was pleased that she now had a mum, like all her friends. They developed warm, trusting, friendly relationships that many girls could envy. Matthew adored his wife and appreciated her contribution to raising his daughter. Eva was happy that she would soon have a brother or sister. Together with Anne, they went shopping and bought various babies' items for the future baby. Anne could no longer imagine another life without Matthew and Eva. One day, when Matthew went out of town, Anne went for a planned appointment to the woman's consultation. Gwen kindly agreed to stay with Eva, especially since her son Tommy was eagerly waiting to play with his new friend again. Anne left the woman's doctor's office in a good mood. The baby was developing well, the heartbeat was normal, and despite the future mother's age, no pregnancy pathologies were detected. As she left the clinic, the woman decided to go to the mall and look for toys for Eve and Tommy. However, an unpleasant surprise awaited Anne at the shopping centre. She came face to face with her ex-husband, Christopher, who froze upon seeing her pregnancy. Anne, how? Yes, my wife didn't grieve for long. Glad to see you. The man couldn't even express his thoughts, his surprise. Hello, Christopher. It's not your business at all. I heard your son was born. Congratulations. I'll say it's good to see you, but it's not. I need to go. Goodbye, Christopher. Anne continued on her way, and Christopher stood still for a while, watching his ex-wife go. When he returned home, his little son ran to meet him. Ellen sat on the couch in the living room, all her attention focused on the phone screen. Hi, Ellen. Are we going to have dinner? Christopher asked from the doorway. Ellen gave the man a dissatisfied look. I asked you to transfer money to my card. Did you forget? She asked, ignoring Christopher's question. Ellen, is that all you want to say to me? You've been acting strange lately. Is everything okay with you? I'm not strange, Christopher. I just don't like it when you ignore my requests. This is not a request. It sounds more like a demand. I'm having difficulties at work. We need to be smart with our money. Not like you're used to. You have been married once to someone who handled the money wisely. And how did it end? I need to update my wardrobe. I don't want to look like a slob like her. Shut up. And don't you dare talk about Anne. You're not worth her little finger. If it weren't for our son... Christopher didn't finish and went to the playroom with the baby. Ellen, realising she had gone too far, went to the kitchen to prepare something for her husband's dinner. Christopher tried to calm down, focusing his attention on his son. But what the two-year-old had told him had left some doubts in the man's mind. The little boy shared with his father how he spent his day, telling him in his own childish way that he had ice cream and played with his uncle. That night, Christopher put off the unpleasant conversation with his wife, but asked what they had been doing today. Ellen answered vaguely that they had stayed home all the day. At night, Christopher couldn't get Anne out of his head. He noted to himself how good she still looked and how pregnancy suited her. The thought that his ex-wife was happy with someone else drove him crazy. A sudden wave of unfounded jealousy overwhelmed him again and again. The next day, Christopher went to work as usual. Unexpectedly, he said to Ellen as he left the house, I sent you the money you asked for on your card, so update your wardrobe. After hearing these words, Ellen smiled and literally jumped on her husband, wrapping her arms around his neck. 
my dear, thank you. I love you, my love. See you tonight, said Christopher. He carefully pushed his wife aside and left the house until evening. The man did not go to work that day. Instead, he decided to follow Ellen to see if she really would go shopping with their son, and soon he got very disappointed because he caught his spouse in the act of deception. As soon as Ellen left the house with their son, Christopher set off after her. He drove cautiously so as not to be noticed. It was immediately alarming that his wife went to a residential area of the city, where she parked the car in front of a ten-story building, took their son in her arms and went inside. Christopher patiently waited for her to come back out, which didn't happen until closer to the evening. Ellen left someone else's house, accompanied by a young man carrying Christopher's son on his shoulders. Christopher barely contained his anger, but didn't reveal himself. He wanted to get to the truth and began to have doubts in his head. Meanwhile, Matthew and Anne finished building their dream home and planned to spend the weekend there with their friends, Wes and Gwen. Matthew, I'm going to my apartment for a minute. I need to water the flowers. We won't be here for a few days. Can you handle it yourself? Maybe take Eva with you? Yes, my love, of course. With Eva, we'll do it faster. Eva did her best, deftly watering the flowers and entertaining Anne by humming a tune. The sudden knock on the door didn't surprise the woman with the child. It's probably Daddy. Please open the door, dear, but first ask who's there. Anne turned to the little girl. Okay, Mama Anne, I'll be right there. Running to the door, Eva asked who was there. Hearing a stranger's voice behind the door, she immediately called for Anne. When the woman looked through the peephole, she was very surprised to see an uninvited guest. Christopher, what are you doing here? The woman asked, opening the door. We need to talk. I'm a fool. Forgive me. I apologize for what I've done to you. Let's start over, please. Anne looked at Eva and smiled at her. Eva, go check if we watered all the flowers together. I need to talk to this person for a few minutes. The little girl obediently nodded her head and disappeared behind the door of the room. Christopher, are you out of your mind? I have a different life now. I'm expecting a child with my beloved. Once upon a time, you said you were finally happy and you were about to have a son, remember? Well, now I understand what you meant. Christopher, I'm finally happy. I have a daughter and another child is on the way. I don't love you. I let you go a long time ago. And no, you can't. I was a fool. I'm divorcing Ellen. She lied to me from the very beginning. She was with me for the money. My son, he isn't mine. It's all a long story. I did a DNA test. Ellen gave birth to a son by another man. And the worst part is, all this time, while I wasn't home, she was spending time with the boy's biological father. Ellen provided for her lover at my expense. Anne, I'm all alone now. Forgive me and come back to our home. Remember how happy we were, together there? I will love your child as my own. I will be lost without you. Christopher looked hopefully at his ex-wife. Now you understand how I felt when you betrayed me. Only, Christopher, let's be honest. I was a faithful wife. I never betrayed you. You destroyed everything yourself. So, it turns out that the fact we didn't have children is not my fault at all. Christopher, you got what you deserved, but it came back to you like a boomerang. Leave and never dare to come here again. I will never come back to you. Christopher was in despair. The apartment door opened and Matthew appeared on the doorstep. He had unintentionally overheard the conversation between his wife and her ex-husband. Dear, you and Eva were gone for a long time. I decided to check if everything was okay, he said. Wes and Gwen have already arrived and Tommy couldn't wait for Eva. Having said this, Matthew looked sternly at the uninvited guest. And what are you doing here? Actually, I bought this apartment. I have the right, Christopher replied. Oh, what a wretch you are. 
This apartment belongs to my wife and only to her. Have you forgotten what it means to be a man? What other rights do you dare to claim here? Matthew sharply interrupted Christopher. Christopher, it's better to leave. It's all over, said Anne. There was nothing to say. Christopher couldn't hold back a tear rolling down his cheek. He sincerely regretted his actions, realising that he had lost his happiness and had destroyed everything himself. Turning around, he slowly headed for the exit. At the doorstep, he turned back and unexpectedly said, Forgive me, Anne. And you, he turned to Matthew. Take care of her. There is no one like Anne in the whole wide world. Don't worry, I won't miss my chance at happiness, Matthew replied coldly and, closing the door behind the guest, went to his wife. Are you okay? he asked. Yes, everything is fine, Anne answered and closed her eyes with pleasure in the arms of her beloved. Eva, it's time for us, Anne called the little girl, and the three of them went to their home. When the happy family cheerfully left the entrance of the building, they had no idea that a lonely man in a car opposite was watching them, gripping the steering wheel tightly. It was Christopher. He just sat and watched Anne and her family disappear, knowing that he would never have her again. Three years passed, and a company of happy people came to spend time in pleasant company on the bank of the river in a cosy paradise corner. Matthew and Wes were busy at the barbecue. Tommy helped Eva teach her younger brother how to ride a three-wheeled bike. Anne and Gwen watched their loved ones lying on soft lounges by the riverbank. I look at my family ones and can't believe how happy I am. Gwen, it's scary to even imagine how I would live without them. Oh, Anne, I don't think it could have been any other way. You deserve your happiness. Don't be offended, but I even envy you in a good way. Every day spent together is like a honeymoon. Matthew loves you, and he can move mountains and even more for you. Yes, Gwen, you're right. It's like wings sprout from your back. Matthew is a great man. He has his production set up, and work is booming. By the way, I'm almost finished with the project of your dream house, so we'll live nearby and see each other more frequently, said Anne joyfully. Girls, the meat is ready. Let's eat while it's hot, Matthew called. Wes watched the approaching beloved women and couldn't hide his excitement. Matthew, we're lucky to have them. Matthew turned around and smiled, seeing beautiful and cheerful women in front of him. Anne thanked fate for everything that happened in her life, for both the bad and the good. Now, she knew what a real family, joy and love were. The life of a deceived woman, abandoned in a moment, changed fundamentally, precisely when she least expected it. Nothing happens for no reason. Every meeting is for something. It's important to correctly recognize the signs of fate so as not to miss happiness passing you by. Every day, looking at how her beloved husband, Matthew, plays with the children, and how happily they laugh. Anne thanked God for the chance of a happy and carefree future. She loves, and she is loved. Anne now knew for sure that life could be started, even at 40. <laughs>